If you love tent, then the maggot feeder is something that you'll definitely want to have in your tackle box. This little inline feeder enables you to feed maggots accurately around your hook bait and combined with a short hook link, you're well on your way to catching tench. In this video, we're gonna show you how to tie up the perfect maggot feeder rig for tench. Firstly, let's take a look at the items that you will need to tie this rig. A maggot feeder, these come in a range of sizes depending on how much bait you want to introduce on each cast. A Guru speed bead, some fluorocarbon hook link, Anything between four and six pounds is about right, unless it's very, very weedy and the tench are big, then you might consider stepping up to maybe an eight pound hook link. Your hook of choice. We normally use a size 12 for a few real maggots on the hook. However, if you're using artificial maggots or casters, uh, then potentially look at using a size 10. Finally, you'll also need some scissors. Firstly, take your main line. We tend to use six or eight pound main line for our tension bream fishing. Thread your line through the maggot feeder and then take the speed bead apart. Thread the bead half onto the main line and then tie the line to the swivel using any strong knot. For this, we like a palomar or blood knot. With the swivel attached, it's now time to set up a hook link. Cut off around six inches of fluorocarbon. The reason for using fluorocarbon as a hook link is that it's almost invisible underwater. Tie one end of this line to your hook. Again, I'm using a blood knot. Trim the tag ends so that it's neat. Leaving long tag ends next to the hook can make it harder to hook fish, but also result in less bites. At the other end of the line, tie an overhand loop. By the way, we've got a full knots playlist on our channel where we run through how to tie fishing knots in more detail. This loop will let you connect the hook link to the speed bead like this. The bead means you can switch hook links easily if you want to change hook size or go longer or shorter. We tend to fish with quite short hook links when tench fishing as it will keep the hook bait close to the loose feed. And also the fish will tighten the hook link quicker and therefore get hooked faster. When tench are actually feeding, they tend to suck and blow baits out very, very quickly. That bait might only go into the mouth for a split second before they spit it back out again. Uh, and using a nice short hook link just means that that fish begins to move off and the hook will get pulled into its mouth quicker. I think if you use very long hook links, you run the risk of the fish sucking in the bait and spitting it out multiple times and not getting hooked. Most of the time, we like to just put two, three, four, or even five maggots just directly onto the hook. That makes a great natural hook bait for tench fishing, especially when you put maggots in the feeder. It makes sense to match the hatch and use exactly the same thing on your hook. However, if the lake that you're fishing is full of roach, perch, small breams, something like that, those silverfish are no doubt gonna nail those maggots quickly and probably pull them off your hook or you'll just end up catching lots of little fish. If your maggots are getting destroyed too fast by the smaller species in the lake that you're fishing, then we would suggest switching over to artificial baits. Fake uh, maggots work really well. They might be plastic, but the fish still eat them. And if you put one or two of those onto a hook, maybe combine that with a couple of real ones, um, have a play around with that. Your aim is to just make sure that you still have a hook bait on after an hour or so. Uh, you, you, d you definitely don't want to be fishing with real maggots if they're being pulled off of your hook too quickly. So artificials are often a good bet. If you have tried using plastic maggots on the hook and you're still catching lots of small fish, you can try switching to a larger hook. That can help get through to the uh, tench. You can also try using plastic sweet corn uh, as a hook bait. Failing that, if the plastic corn is still being picked up by you know maybe big rud or something, uh, then you can uh, give a small boilie a go. 12, maybe 15 millimeter boilie uh, is a good option if those uh, smaller silverfish species are just relentless and you keep catching them. If you are casting regularly, which is what we would encourage you to do at the beginning of a session to get a good bed of bait out and start drawing the fish into your swim, then these maggot feeders are absolutely perfect. The maggots escape from them very quickly and feed feed the fish that are in the swim. They, they release the bait very fast. However, if you don't want to be recasting so regularly and actually you want to cast a big feeder out and leave it there uh, for two, three, four hours, you can actually take some gaffer tape and cover up some of the holes on your feeder, leaving just three or four little holes uh, on the feeder 
basically just means that the maggots will take longer to wriggle out. That way you have a constant stream of loose feed coming out uh, into your swim. And yeah, you don't have to cast so regularly and disturb the swim so much. A lot of the time what we'll do is we'll make a number of casts at the beginning of the session with all of the holes exposed so you get some bait out, get it to the deck, start drawing fish in. And then as the day wears on, we'll actually just grab a bit of gaffer tape, stick it over the feeder and then reduce how much bait is actually being fed into the swim. That definitely helps keep the bites coming and means that you don't have to you know, keep regularly casting as the day goes on. You can fish the maggot feeder just with the one rod, sitting and watching your quiver tip for bites, or alternatively you can fish uh, two rods with identical setups, chuck them out and leave them on bite alarms. It's really up to you. But whether you're fishing you know, one rod or two, or even three if you're fishing somewhere that's very difficult and you need to you know, put in the time, the most important part uh, of this style of angling is that you're casting to the same spot over and over. If you are spreading your rods out and, and they're landing in different places each time you cast, you're not really building the swim, you're, you're spreading your bait out too much and you're not condensing those fish in the one area that you've uh, chosen to fish. So accurate casting, as with most styles of fishing, is very important when you're fishing the maggot feeder. If you want to learn more about accurate casting using the line clip and making sure you hit the same spots every time, check out the video on screen now. Hope you enjoy it, see you soon.